Hello, and welcome to Cases from the Coop. I'm Sarab Sodi, the Emergency Ultrasound Fellow at Cooper University Hospital. And today we're going to discuss a slightly different situation, but one that you're all intimately familiar with. So as happens maybe five, six times a shift for most of us, the nurse, even though our emergency nurses are phenomenal, come up to you and ask that there's a patient where they're having a ton of difficulty getting ultrasound, uh, getting IV access, and they were hoping that we could come put an IV in with ultrasound. Now, that's something that if you've recently graduated from residency, you are pretty familiar with. But on the other hand, if you have not recently graduated from residency, and even in the last five, seven years, a lot of people haven't develop the comfort of putting ultrasound guided IVs in. So today we're going to try to talk about what the rationale is, how it works, what the benefits are, what the risks are, and when to do it and how it works. So we'll dive right into it. First and foremost, we're going to talk very briefly about the data. There is a lot of data. A lot of data looking at ultrasound guided IVs placed by nurses, placed by physicians, placed by techs, and the data seems to suggest that pretty much anyone with a certain amount of training, can learn how to put these in safely and efficiently, can do so in a way that is safer and more effective than if they were attempting to do EJs or even to do regular style multiple sticks. And even in kids, it seems to work reasonably well. So we're going to talk through a few things. We're going to talk through equipment, preparation, how to position the patient, how to identify a vessel, and then most importantly, how to get the catheter in the vessel. So let's dive in. Here's the stuff you need. First and foremost, you need an ultrasound machine. The brand is irrelevant, but the thing you really need is to make sure that you have a high-frequency linear probe. That's one of these. You want to make sure that you are able to get a, preferably a venous access setting on there, because that'll help you get the best picture. Some fancy systems also have the ability to help find the needle and dynamically guide you down. In practice, I don't know how well that works, but know it's a possibility for when you uh, are in the market for a new machine. In addition, you need a bunch of equipment to make sure you're functional. You need a start kit. These start kits are commercially prepared. They contain tegaderm, tourniquet, tape, gauze. In addition, you'll need a flush, you'll need a connector, you'll need a vacutainer, and you'll need whatever blood tubing your nurse needs from you. Additionally, you'll need a ultrasound-guided IV catheter. So regular IV catheters come in this variety. Those are your usual 30 millimeter catheters. The ones that you'd want to use for ultrasound are typically 48 millimeters, right there, or 1.88 inches. So they're almost one and a half, a little more than one and a half times the length of the catheter. And the reason why we care about that is we want to make sure that there is enough depth to, to get to the deeper veins. Additionally, because one, it's better for patient safety, and two, because the Joint Commission will be upset with you, you want to make sure you adequately protect the patient from the vascular probe and the vascular probe from the patient. So some form of coverage, whether it is the full central line dressing kit that you see here, or whether it's simply a tegaterm, which I will warn you, does damage the uh, vascular probe eventually, or alternative options as well. And then finally, what you'll need is a patient with an arm. So this, one of the things that's the toughest to do is to position a patient well. You want to make sure your, position, your patient is laying in the bed, scooched over with their arm open for you. Because remember, most of your veins are on that medial aspect of, the, of their upper arm. And if you aren't able to get to that, you're not going to succeed. You want to try to put the ultrasound machine behind the patient, because if it's in front of them, you're going to have difficulty. You typically don't want to do this with the ultrasound machine behind you and the patient in front of you. It makes it particularly hard to try to cannulate the vein. Now, talking through, there's a lot of veins in the upper arm, and we're not going to run through all of them. We're just going to talk about the three you really care about. Namely, you want to talk about the cephalic vein, the basilic vein, the brachial vein or the brachial artery, and then as it runs down, the cephalic vein in the arm as well. Now, the cephalic vein is sometimes hard to find. Frequently, it's easy to find the basilic because it's the large unpaired vein and the medial aspect. And the brachial vein uh, is, lies next to the artery of the nerve. So, now that we've talked through all of that, what do you do if you think you found a vein? Well, you want to try to make sure that it runs nice and straight. You want to make sure that the vein is no more than two centimeters deep because you're unlikely to successfully cannulate it if it is. In addition, you want to make sure it's at least less than 0.3 centimeters deep. And the bigger the vessel, the better it is. So let's jump into it. So if you're doing a technique for 
regards to technique when you have a patient who needs ultrasound guided venous access you want to do the following first and foremost when you have the machine in front of you you want to decrease the depth which is this number in the corner all the way down to the smallest number you can while still seeing the target you're going for the reason why is because there's a ton of dead space on the screen here and while that might just make ultrasound nerds like myself offended what you really care about is you want to make sure that your object of interest is as large as you can make it so you can see that needle and you have the best ability to get the needle the way you need it to be. I'm going to teach you the out of plane technique today. The out of plane technique is this technique here where you stick behind the probe, your probe lies perpendicular to the needle and you'll see this sort of image with it in cross section. The in-plane technique, or the long axis technique, visually looks really nice, but it is a little bit harder to do technically, and I found that starting out, it's not probably the best way to go, though there are some advanced applications for it. So, the other thing I want you to think about is doing a, long, is doing a steep angle of attack. You want to ensure that your angle is at at least 45 degrees, if not more. That gives you the best likelihood of having enough catheter in the vein. Here's an example of what I mean. If you stick shallow at about 15, 20 degrees, you'll run the entire catheter the whole way down and run out of it by the time you reach the vessel. If, on the other hand, you stick steeper, you find that you leave a significant amount of catheter in the vein. This is obviously far less likely to uh, infiltrate or to fall out. Now, here's a schematic for how this works. You're going to put the probe in your non-dominant hand and you're going to take the needle and stick right behind the probe. You're going to advance that needle until you see a white dot appear on the screen. You're then going to advance your probe with your non-dominant hand sliding it along the patient until you lose sight of the needle. Then you'll advance the needle again until you see it show up on the probe, hopefully moving towards where you want it, which here is the vessel. Then you will move the probe forward again, lose sight of it, and then advance your needle again to bring it back into view. And once you're in the vessel, you want to ensure that you start to flatten out that angle so that you don't come out through the back wall. And then as you do that, you'll move the probe forward again, lose sight of it, advance the needle, probably flattening out your angle as just trying to ensure that you can get that vessel to stay right in the place it needs to be. You keep doing this all the way until you're hopped. This is a common mistake that when people first start out, they get excited and they retract the needle as soon as they see that the needle is in the vessel. And then they discover that they have difficulty with the catheters beginning to slide out. Now, in real life, what you want to do is insert that needle a few millimeters and you want to find your needle tip. And then you want to make sure you found your needle tip and really make sure you found your needle tip because if you advance without knowing exactly where your needle is, that's how you hurt someone. The reason I keep asking you to lose sight of that needle tip as you move is because you want to ensure that you're not seeing a different part of the needle. The needle shaft all the way down to the tip all looks identical. The thing that distinguishes it is that the dot disappears. As it disappears, you know you're at the end. So, uh, in the interest of education, I volunteered to let one of our interns Dr. Adorna there, put in an ultrasound guided IV in my arm. So you can see that she's got the probe in her non-dominant hand, the needle in her dominant hand. She's got the machine across from me, uh, across from her, I'm sorry, and that she is sticking at a steep angle right behind where that needle is. You see that bright white dot come into the skin. You see her advance it down towards the vessel. You see her puncture into the vessel wall. And now we're going to zoom in on sort of the ultrasound part of this. You see her in the vessel wall, and then she's sliding forward, losing sight of it, and advancing that needle. And the way she's doing that is she's ensuring that it stays right in the middle. There's a portion there where she begins to lose a little bit of contact, but she gets it back, and you can see at the very end how she's sort of advancing that all the way in. Now at this point, she's hubbed. So one of the things I like to do, and I've been teaching a lot of people to do, is to confirm in long axis. So this is what that looks like. You see the skin and the sub tissue, you see the vessel, and then you see this catheter in there with this bright white line that was, this, that was the needle. And then right around there you see the needle being retracted 
as everything moves and then there's just a catheter left so now you've successfully celebrated you put in the ultrasound guided IV you're phenomenal what else do we need to talk about a couple of quick things first and foremost just a reminder setup is key if you have the, everything set up the patient the machine yourself you're comfortable the patient's comfortable your likelihood of success just went up exponentially as those things start to fail you'll discover that it gets harder and more frustrating secondly you want to ensure that you use a tourniquet when you don't use a tourniquet your vessel looks a whole lot less plump and juicy than if you do use a tourniquet additionally you want to ensure that you've selected that vessel really well when your vessel does this as you slide your probe up the arm squiggle over from left to right and back that's unlikely to be one that's really amenable to, to vascular access if on the other hand your vessel is staying pretty straight as you slide up that arm you're likely to do just fine as always you can always reach us at the at Cooper EMUS Twitter feed and we'll be back with something more soon thanks bye bye